Film and Psychoanalysis, September 2010. Sosopo, a fishing village by the Black Sea. More than 200 participants from all over the country, students, filmmakers, Bulgarian and international scholars gathered to share the experience of an intense and fruitful discussion. Since about 20 years, psychoanalysts have been discussing cinema issues, but it was the first time for them to meet in Bulgaria in a friendly summer conference organized by Vivian Promotarov Hamburger and Andreas Hamburger, members of the Munich Film and Psychoanalysis Group. What is most encouraging is that in recent years a new interdisciplinary dialogue has developed between our two cultural fields and psychoanalysts are now also showing an interest in the contribution that films can offer them. Cuts into time, fears and views, distorted glances, four movies were screened and discussed. Starting with Sleuth, an intimate hide and seek between two rivals, but the woman does not even appear. It's quite a shocking film. I do not find the film shocking. Perhaps the uh, situation makes um, us feel shocked. It's about a triangle of which we know the two men and we never see the woman. And it's about a repressed or not so repressed homosexuality uh, in a form of some kind of sadomasochistic game. One of them was uh, with makeup of a woman, but somehow um, raskriven, distorted. distorted, and uh, for me, and, and in that moment I thought maybe this is uh, an expression of this distorted relationship with the inner mother inside of this man. Maybe it's also an, uh, an artistic injury on the part of the uh, diagesis because who is on top of the other? A frenetic young painter and a death-seeking old man together with a young mystic boy are the protagonists of Warden of the Death, a film about mourning in post-socialistic Bulgaria. Two of the main characters were performed by the legendary Bulgarian actor Itzko Finci and his likewise well-known son Samuel. Both father and son joined the conference to share their acting experiences. Probably this is kind of a marketing of the film. It's kind of additional attraction, you know, to have a father and a son in the same film. So I was thinking that this is a serious film. If you look back now, is, is this film a special film for you? For us, it's a special film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for you, if you ask me, working with uh, this man, <laughs> uh, of course, it's something special. I spent time with him, and we spent it working together, and uh, it wasn't easy for me to to see that. So I you mean have to have anything because it was your father? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And if the thoughts are correct, then the emotions, they come. Mm -hmm. So in this situation, I just had to, uh, to, to analyze the situation, so the emotions were there. Inspired by this encounter, the audience plunged into the workshop discussions. The beginning of life is also the predictability of the next movement of the mother. This is in the first pictures of the film. You have the thumb cinema, these uh, moments, fle the fleeing moments, tak, 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 one picture after the other. We are sitting in a room with pictures passing by very rapidly, like a baby grasping reality as a temporary event. The only person that was clear cut, non flu, explicit colors is the woman. The, I think the movie has so many levels that each of us has their own interpretation, obviously, of it. And I think that he has tried to manifest a certain um, calmness and a certain acceptance of death. I miss the chills. Please go to the 
another Bulgarian movie about life after the change, Mila from Mars tells the story of a young pregnant girl. She flees from her pimp to find shelter in a strange village where some old people earn their living by growing marijuana. On center stage for most of the film, Mila displays considerable cunning and determination in running away from her unscrupulous sociopathic boyfriend and pimp, Alex. They feel close to each other and develop a warm feeling for the orphanage. When we become aware of it, uh, this has the effect of inducing in at least some of us viewers, myself included, a sense of parental protection. And finally, The White Ribbon. Hanukkah's provoking film about violence and education. There is no real tenderness. The real authentic feelings is aggression. And that's, I think that's, it's, it's a danger to, to come um, in contact be all the Bulgarian as the German. During the intense discussion, one of the members described the difference between the Bulgarian and the German psychological culture, like from here to the moon. And I think that's a problem. It's like in the movie, that's so much aggression, and it's no only this perversion way to, uh, yeah, to handle it. While watching the film, I felt more cold and frozen, something like that. Maybe a bit lonely, but afterwards I get I get into a bad mood. Mm -hmm. So we continue to be the warriors, and we want to see the naked bottom, and we want to see the blinded eyes. The only way to understand the film is to eliminate this feeling of aggression. The aggression. Okay. There is a certain quality to this kind of aggression in the whole movie. You have it in funny games too, where the victims are. Uh, are captured and you feel right away they have no chance to get away. The problem of the discussion is we speak different languages and we have a different religion. Few Bulgarians have any idea about Catholicism. I felt the strong feeling also to resist just like Clara in the film. It's not only uh, that I have to admire a perfect film who shows me my own, my own negative and disliked uh, emotions, but I only, uh, only also want to say I'm not a sadist. Точно като Клара исках малко да реагирам, да експлодирам и да кажа аз не съм садист. It's typical for Hanke that he lets the audience alone with their feelings in a manipulative, non-manipulative way. I want to share that uh, for me there were a lot of moments in the movie when there was exchange of warm feelings. Tenderness. And, uh, tenderness. Different culture, different languages, different religions, different totalitarian experiences, reflecting cinema in a psychoanalytic key, the talking cure, building bridges between different people. As analysts, our main experience is the clinical situation. And uh, if we uh, watch movies and try to interpret movies, I think we must be aware of the similarities and the differences between our clinical work and dealing with movies. You, you mentioned one, uh, uh, this pro projection and identification of the spectator. And uh, I, I would be, perhaps you could say a few words in your view, what are the similarities and the differences between the clinical situation and the situation of the spectator? In my view, there's one term which I like quite a bit. This is a participa participating observation. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is describing this oscillation between uh, immersing emotionally into the, into the, what is the patient talking and what is going on on the screen. 
Um, I must thank you, Professor Ralph Spiegel, for two reasons. One, because you've asked a very important question, and two, because you've answered it yourself. <laughs> Film meets psychoanalysis. Movies open the gates of emotions, but there's just a short step between enlightenment and illusion. The soul of cinema mirrors itself in the thinking mind of the audience, and the light shines in darkness very well, so it can be reflected. Something has been started that has now a fantastic momentum. It is absolutely important to build on it and develop from it. <laughs> 